a relatively calm second week of May. How is this affecting the US dollar and the housing stats? As well as the Eurozone, we'll be looking at the coronavirus and how it's affecting the markets currently. All this with Bob Mason of FX Empire. This is The Week Ahead. Hello, Bob, and thank you once again for joining us. Let's jump straight in. The second week of May has been relatively quiet. What can we expect from the US dollar in this respect? Housing sector data at the beginning of the week, uh, housing starts and building permits, those are in focus. We're not expecting too much influence from the numbers. Um, there may be some further downside, but that shouldn't impact the dollar too much. FOMC minutes on Wednesday, however, will garner plenty of attention. Obviously, Fed Chair Powell spoke up last Wednesday and there'll be plenty of interest in terms of how uh, FOMC members view the economic outlook. Um, so that will be key. Um, leading into Thursday, we're beginning to see May economic indicators now, which are particularly poignant um, to see what immediate impact the easing lockdown measures have had on economic indicators, particularly in the manufacturing sector with Philly Fed and service sector activity with the PMI numbers out as well, uh, prelim numbers. So expect Thursday to be quite a move for the markets. And obviously, we've got the initial jobless claims as well. Um, another just shy of 3 million initial claims in the week prior. Um, so, you know, anything close to that, and, and it's just getting quite dire in terms of the economic outlook for the US. So that certainly supports Fed Chair Powell's more cautious stance that we saw last week. But it seems that traders should be looking out for building permits and housing stats coming out next week. Uh, but let's focus on the Eurozone and the UK now. What's happening there? It's a busy week for the pounds. We've got employment figures at the start of the week that are garner plenty of attention. Expect claiming counts to, to be the main area of focus. That's the nearest numbers that we can see. Obviously, the unemployment rate um, is a bit more dated, so that's going to have less significance. Um, then we shift to inflation figures. That's not going to have a material impact on the pound. However, we're expecting deflationary pressures to build. And then we get retail sales and private sector PMIs in the second half of the week. Uh, main numbers for the PMIs, those premiums, so that's, that's going to be particularly telling. Uh, forecasts are negative, um, a greater contraction in the private sector as the UK lockdown continues. So that's going to be a negative pound. For the Eurozone, we've got plenty of data to consider. We've got the ZEW economic sentiment numbers in the early part of the week. Then we shift to Eurozone inflation figures. Again, unlikely to have too much impact midweek on the Euro. And then we have private sector PMIs for May, the premium numbers, uh, again, that's going to be a big set of figures for the for the euro and the eurozone economy. Lockdown measures are still there, so don't expect any major rebound, and that's going to pretty much write off Q2. Um, so then we're starting to look at you know the end of Q2 going into Q3. Are we going to see any material pickup in economic activity? Um, eurozone uh, consumer sentiment figures uh, in the latter part of the week as well, where those flash numbers are, are forecasted to reflect. A, a reversal of the pickup we saw in the, in the month prior. So that's another euro negative. So plenty of, plenty of volatility in the week ahead for the two. Private PMI numbers in the spotlight once again will have a significant effect on the euro USD and cable. Uh, but what about the Commonwealth currencies? How's it looking for the loonie and the Kiwi? For the commodity currencies, for the loonie, we got inflation figures in, in the first half of the week and then retail sales figures at the end of the week. Um, inflation figures aren't likely to have too much influence. You know, that's across the board, across the economies as a result of falling oil prices and, and a, a slump in consumption. Uh, so expect the same for retail sales figures. They're not going to be doing too much either. Same for the Kiwi dollar. Retail sales figures are not going to be particularly great. Uh, lockdown measures were in place until late April. So all in all, it's going to be risk sentiment through the week, COVID-19 up COVID updates, uh, you know, and obviously any chatter from Beijing and Washington on you know, sanctions, which, you know, the US seems to be quite keen to proceed with. For the Aussie dollar, we've got the RBA minutes on, on Tuesday. Um, th they're likely to be standing pat for some time now to assess, you know, the damage and what impact fiscal and monetary support is going to have um, these policy moves that have been made. Um, but expect, you know, plenty of chatter of support, uh, which should limit any material upside for the Aussie dollar. So commodities, really the main drivers, risk sentiment. So keep an eye on that for the week ahead. So it appears all calm on the Commonwealth front, but how about our Asian giants, uh, China and Japan? How's it looking there? Well, it's a busy week for the Japanese yen. You got plenty of data to consider. First quarter GDP numbers at the beginning of the week, that sets the tone. Uh, expect some pretty 
you know, dire numbers for the first quarter. Japan was in lockdown through, you know, much of February and March and even, you know, going into April. So it's, it's not going to be pretty. Um, then we've got finalized industrial production figures. That's going to have a muted impact. Uh, and then later on in the week, we've got inflation figures and trade data. Trade data will garner some interest. Um, has there been any, any pickup in demand, you know, from overseas? Unlikely when you consider lockdown measures. There may be a pickup from China, however, you know, as activity picked up. But when we saw China's uh, import figures for last month, you know, they, they were on the slide again. They were quite material slide. So that's that's not a good omen for, for the Japanese figures, you know, in the week ahead. The only positive, however, is the removal of the emergency measures over COVID-19. So that, that's, that's a yen positive. So hopefully that will st start supporting consumption. Out of China, there's no stats. We've got the PBOC in action with prime loan rates. Um, so will they be cutting further? Uh, forecasts are for no, stand pat. So that will leave the markets a bit jittery, you know, as the US and, and China go at it in terms of, you know, who who's to blame for COVID-19. And finally, away from the calendars, uh, the coronavirus outbreak is still having a major impact on the markets. But what other geopolitical and macroeconomic data can we expect next week? Away from the economic calendar, we've got obviously US, China, you know, the, net, the blame game going on. Uh, sanctions on China, that's meant to be progressing. Um, how will China respond to that? And what does that mean for, for the phase one trade agreement? But it took a year and a half in the making in terms of you know, obviously negotiations and Trump, you know, playing his his negotiation games, as it were. Uh, then you've got Brexit, uh, you know, obviously the EU's attempting to take Britain to court over freedom of movement. That demonstrates just how dire relations have become between Britain and the EU. And that points to a hard Brexit. Um, neither side are likely to find common ground near term, you know, so that's fisheries, trade and so forth. And then obviously, you know, you've got to monitor COVID-19 numbers in the week as governments ease lockdown measures. Are there any, you know, marked increases in new cases anywhere that would lead to a reversal in those measures that would be doom and gloom for the economic outlook? for the remainder of the year, really. So a number of things to look out for away from the economic calendar. Well, that's all for today, Bob. Thank you once again for joining us. And as always, keep safe. That was The Week Ahead. Thank you for watching. In the meantime, don't forget to stay up to date with our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn for more information.